Isla Mahachev wants to move up to the welterweight division and take on Colby Chaos Covington if he is victorious against Charles Oliveira at UFC 294 Abu Dhabi just around the corner. Cannot wait for that one. Islam wants to be great. He wants to be a legend. He wants to go down in history. He wants to join the four other double champs. Who are the four? Well, of course, Amanda Nunes, the lioness, notorious one, Conor McGregor, DC double champ, Daniel Cormier, and of course, the king of cringe, the cringiest. Henry Cejudo. Gotta love that guy, though. Shout out Cejudo. Yeah, so that's what Islam Mahachev wants. And I kind of get it. I think his logic is because his last fight, he allowed Alexander Volkanovsky to move up in weight to 155, challenging for the belt. And he did it in Australia and he won the fight. Okay. And he's probably still not getting the respect that he deserves because Volkanovsky was the pound for pound number one. He beat the pound for pound number one and he's still Islam, not the pound for pound number one. And then on top of that, Joe Rogan just came out recently saying what a tremendous fight it was, but he thought Volkanovsky won that fight as well. That's going to piss Islam off just a little bit. The reality is Islam won the fight. It was a fantastic, sensational battle. Still, here is what Islam had to say. He said, I don't know what the UFC has planned, but my dream is to fight for the second belt. Of course, I'm under contract. So whatever the UFC says, I will fight. No problem. But Edwards versus Colby. I really believe that I can beat the winner. I look at their skills and what they have as a champion. And I know my skills. It's going to be a good fight. I'm not saying I beat them easy. It's going to be a hard fight, tough fight against a big guy. But I believe that I can finish those guys. Now, he did go on to say specifically he wants Colby Covington because Colby Covington and him have been going back and forth and there'll be a huge USA wrestling versus Russian wrestling and that would be quite the storyline and I'm sure a lot of people would tune in. But Colby's going to beat Leon first and that ain't going to be easy. But here is the exact quote what he says. I hope Covington wins because I don't know what Leon says about fighting me. I've never heard Leon say that he wants this fight, but Colby wants it. That's why I want Colby to win and we can meet one day. It would be a very good fight. He has good wrestling. It's going to be US versus Dagestan wrestling. He's a good fighter. He has good wrestling, good conditioning. But in my opinion, I stop his wrestling and I land many good punches, brother. This is his prediction for a fight. This is what he thinks will happen. Um, so, obviously, to get to this situation, a lot's going to happen first, okay? I did a video the other day saying that Tyson Fury is overlooking or mocking Francis Ngannou because he's already booked another fight against Alexander Usyk. I mean, that's just wild. That's not what Islam is doing here. No, he's not. He's trying to be great. He's trying to go down in history. And he's just saying he would like the opportunity. But, of course... He's got to get through Charles Oliveira. That isn't going to be easy. Now, with the odds maker, I think Islam is something like a minus 350 or a 380 favorite. So you'd have to put $380 on Islam to get 100 back. So he's a pretty big favorite, but you can't count out Du Bronx. Of course, last time he went out there, made it look pretty easy, dropped him, took him down, had his way, and choked him out in seconds once it hit the canvas in the second round. But Charles Oliveira is some guy, and I am expecting him to come out and have a better go this time. Time, okay. Now Charles is bitching a little bit saying it's unfair. You know what I mean? I've got to go to his backyard and all the rest of it. But we talked about that recently. It's not unfair. It's not unfair. Islam went off to uh went off to Australia when he fought Volkanovsky. We're going off the point, we're going off topic. So he's gonna beat Charles Oliveira, and Leon has got to lose to Colby Covington. Now, I don't think that's going to happen. I really don't. Listen, Leon Edwards is incredible, and he's also a giant welterweight. Very, very tall. I remember I went to a UFC event, and I was there with my wife, and I was standing there, and Israel Adesanya was next to me. I said, hey, what's up, Izzy? And there was a guy next to Izzy, and I'm looking at him, and I think, that's Leon Edwards. But he was so tall, I thought, it can't be Leon. Leon's a welterweight. That can't be Leon. And then I did a double take. I'm like, oh, shit. What's up, Leon? How are you doing? So Leon's a very, very big welterweight. And that's why I also think it's going to be a tall order. See what I did there? It's going to be a tall order for Colby Covington. It really is. That is going to be a tough fight. But if it goes down like that, if Colby does beat him, if he wins, and if Islam, like a lot of people probably think, will, the odds, the bookies, fans in general, everyone other than Du Bronx. If he beats Charles Oliveira, then you never know. Will we see this fight? The reality is there is other contenders at welterweight and there's certainly other contenders at lightweight. Lightweight is one of the most stacked divisions. So it'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it, for Islam to go, and I'm not hating on Islam, by the way, big fan, 
a huge fan. Even though somebody, people still like, seem to like to paint this narrative that I hate on the Dagestani fighters. I've got so much respect for their work ethic, how they handle themselves and what they bring to the table in terms of fighting talent. I mean, they are just incredible. They really are. So shout out to all of them and keep doing what you're doing. But the reality is that Islam's last fight was against somebody that wasn't ranked at lightweight. And now he's going to beat Charles Oliveira for a second time and then move up to welterweight. Listen, I'm all for it for him but for people in the lightweight division that might annoy them there's a bit of a log jam there and there's lots of worthy contenders but still who cares i'm not in the lightweight division that's not my problem i just want to see big blockbuster epic fights and that would certainly be one of those now as i said i went through all the uh the double champs before but there's a few more granted when it comes to double champs simultaneous champs of course we know conor mcgregor was the first one to do that we've also got the only female to do that which was the Lioness Amanda Nunes. We've got Daniel Cormier and we've got Henry Cejudo, as I said. But there's been a few others. There's been a few others. Can you guess who they are? Now, of course, they were not simultaneous champs, but they were champions of two weight divisions. John Jones, obviously light heavyweight GOAT for a long time and now the heavyweight champ. We also have George St. Pierre, who was the longtime welterweight king and then went on quite the hiatus, came back and choked me unconscious and took my belt and became the welterweight champion as well. <laughs> of course, we've got one of the best to ever do it. BJ Penn, the prodigy. People forget about BJ Penn, man. He was unbelievable back in the day. Welterweight champion, lightweight champion, shout out BJ Penn. And then of course, we got the natural, Randy Couture, we're going old school, light heavyweight champion, heavyweight champion, and hell of an American. He really is, what a guy that he is. So there's all the champions for you. But what do you think? Do you th is that the fight to make? If Islam Mahachev is victorious against Charles Oliveira, and I'll do a breakdown on that video, I do think Islam has a very, very good chance. He's got superior MMA grappling, probably. And from what we've seen, he hits harder and the striking is getting better all the time. Against Volkanovski, he nailed Volkanovski with some beautiful shots, okay? But is that the fight to make if he gets through Charles Oliveira? Is it? Is it? And is it the fight for Colby Covington if he becomes the champion? Right, because that's a risky one as well. But here's the thing about going up to another weight class and challenging for the belt. There's no risk involved, so of course you want to do that. For example, we just saw it Volkanovski. He went up to challenge Islam, didn't get the job done, did himself proud, didn't win. Still, pound for pound number one, but still more importantly, the featherweight champion of the world, right? And it's always that way when somebody moves up, when they're attempting to become the two-way division champion, right? When I was the champion, I worked with Tyron Woodley a lot at the Fox Sports Studios. Tyron, great guy, but he was always trying to come up to middleweight to challenge me because again, nothing to lose, okay? And that's what Islam would be doing here. He's got nothing to lose. He would go up, he would challenge for the 170 belt against Leon or Colby. Of course he wants to do that. But the person that's really taking the risk there is the person that's the weight class above because you don't want to get beat by the little guy. Definitely not. And you don't want to get beat by the little guy when they've just taken four fucking years off and come back and choke you out. Yes, I'm talking about George St. Pierre. Shout out to him as well. Giving a lot of shout outs today. Hope you're all well. What do you think about what I just talked about? Let me know in the comment section. Come at me if you want. Talk some shit, I don't care. Subscribe and ring the bell though. I'll see you soon. All the best.